We will now take a look at another financial energy derivative that is options contracts specifically as they relate to energy trading. We will define uh, what options are, the types of options, some of the major terms, the benefits and risks of using options, what happens to options at expiration, how are options valued, and then just a summary of some of the key learning points relative to options themselves. By definition, options are another type of financial instrument used to manage risk and or speculate. An option contract gives the holder of the option contract the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell futures contracts at a specified price at any time in the future prior to the expiration of the option contract. I want to s uh, stress again that the buyer of an option contract has the right, but not the obligation, similar to what I mentioned about car insurance. Uh, you pay a premium. If you don't have an accident and the year goes by, you're strictly at the premium. You don't have to call the insurance company and make some type of a claim. It's your right to do that, but you have no obligation to do so. Types of contracts, we have calls and we have puts. In a call option, the buyer has the option to buy futures contracts. Therefore, we say that their options position is long because the contract they have gives them the right to purchase futures contracts. So they are long the financial contracts. So a lot of these times the holder is short the underlying commodity. A good example of a purchaser of a call option would be a crude refiner. They may be concerned about rising prices for crude oil and therefore they may enter into a call option whereby they have the right to buy contracts in the future at some set price. Conversely, a put option gives the buyer the option the right to sell futures contracts at some point in time. The options position is considered to be short and many times the holder is long the underlying commodity. That is, for example, we could use a crude producer. Crude producers want to guarantee themselves a market in the future. They may be concerned about falling prices. If they purchase a put option, they're given the right to sell futures contracts against their production in the future at some known price. The most popular type of option is the futures option, the commodity option. It is exchange traded option calling for the delivery of a futures contract. However, options are also traded in the over-the-counter market and some of those can call for physical delivery. Options types, we have calls and puts. The commodity is listed in the contract, the date, that is the particular month for the futures contracts, the strike price, that is the agreed upon price, the exercise price that the holder or buyer of the options has in there, and then the premium, that's the amount paid to the seller of the option for the contract. The premium, that's the price of the option. The premium value reflects the risk of the underlying commodity. Its value is made up of two components. The first component is what is known as the intrinsic value. That's the positive difference between the strike price and the current price of the underlying commodity. So if a crude refiner purchased a call option for the month of October at $95 and the current market was at $98, the intrinsic value would be $3. Time value, all other remaining value than the intrinsic is consists of several components. We refer to these as the Greeks. These are the uh, analytics that make up the other portion of the premium. The strike price is the buy or sell price as detailed in the options contract. It's also known as the exercise price. The expiration its the date by which the outcome of the option contract, whether it's sold, exercised, or abandoned, must be determined. It is typically one to three days prior to the expiration of the underlying futures contract. For example, the New York Mercantile Exchange natural gas contract options expire one day to the expiration of the contract itself, which is three business days prior to the first of the month. Again, the Greeks, these are just theoretical values. They're projected from mathematical models and they're used to measure the sensitivity of an options price to quantifiable factors. The Greeks are delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho, and each one of them represents a different portion of the options value. Benefits of using options. An options premium is a, fa is a fraction of the cost of the underlying commodity. It potentially gives you control of a large number of futures contracts for a relatively small price. 
take for instance the uh, crude refiner they could go out and buy contracts uh, outright for the month of February excuse me for the month of October they would have to pay the entire sum total within two days of the value of the contracts that they purchased or they could turn around and purchase a call option at a premium price per contract that would be considerably less cash outlay to do that than to do the other this allows them to go out and potentially purchase or have the potential to purchase several times the amount of contracts that they otherwise could afford to do and this does give them leverage in the futures markets now the options buyers risk is known it's limited to the amount paid for the option premium again looking at car insurance you're going to pay a set premium every year your exposure is no more than that if you have an accident and you call your insurance company the the most that you're exposed for is your deductible which is basically your strike price if you don't have an accident all you're out is the premium you paid for that particular year in the case of options buyers the same thing applies they know what the premium is they pay that premium and that is their maximum exposure the risk involved with options it's a time sensitive investment uh, as the options expiration gets closer and closer the value of the options tends to decrease the further out an option is the higher the value and uh, premium for the option the option seller also known as the writer of the options they are at risk for unlimited potential losses what they want to be able to do is to collect the premium from the options purchasers and never have to have to go out and cover those options again much like your insurance company they just want to collect the premiums they don't want you to have an accident and they don't want to have to pay out claims here are three options that can occur for options at expiration if you will the option can expire worthless if it's never executed by the buyer then the options will just expire worthless if you're trading options the option can be sold for intrinsic value if there still is intrinsic value left come expiration day so it's sold for its intrinsic value if one is in an option buyer position or the option is purchased for its intrinsic value if one is in a seller or writer position and more than likely the option could be exercised by the buyer of the option if the price the strike price is exceeded then the options buyer will go ahead and exercise the option options are generally valued using pricing theory and or pricing models the most popular model the most well known uh, for options valuation is the black shoals model here's an example of the Black Shoals model. Um, you can evaluate the options value at contract expiration and as previously stated at expiration the contract has no more time value and one would ex expect the options value to be solely the intrinsic value. Here are the inputs to the Black Shoals model. You need the asset price which is the current market price of the commodity. A strike price in this case two dollars. Time to expiration this is a fractional percentage of 365 days so whatever days are remaining till the expiration of the option divided by 365 gives you the fractional input for this the risk-free rate this is the interest rate uh, whereby if the cash was not deployed to purchase options it could be used this is your so-called opportunity cost and we calculate that as an interest rate and then volatility the volatility of the commodity is extremely important because as we've talked about before volatility not only represents the uh, magnitude of change in price but also the speed with which prices change the D1 and D2 are the Delta figures but you can see here then for a two dollar thirty cent market uh, someone wishing to buy a call option at two dollars would be paying thirty two cents thirty cents of that obviously is the intrinsic value and the remaining two cents represents time value conversely in a two dollar thirty cent market a two dollar put would be fairly inexpensive in this case it's only two cents one can also anticipate the value utilizing just basic understandings the purchaser of a call option is anticipating the price of the underlying security to increase they're worried about higher prices and they want to establish a ceiling price so one would expect the call options value to increase with an increase in the commodity price if the st strike price were higher than the actual commodity price the option should have little to no value so to kind of summarize here the purchaser of a call option 
expects the price of the futures contracts to increase. That means their sentiment is bullish on the underlying commodity. The purchaser of a put option expects the price of the futures contract to decrease, so they are said to be bearish on the underlying commodity. Options are referred to as being asymmetrical. It is a right, but not an obligation. Options are financial in nature. Delivery of physicals is r relatively rare. An options premium typically moves in concert with an options valuation. At expiration, the time value portion of the premium is equal to zero. An options trading is a zero-sum game. For every buyer of an option, there has to be a seller or writer of an option out there. And finally, a quick cheat sheet here so that you can understand the calls and puts and the positions that the buyers and sellers have under each of these respective options contracts.